nation experiencing a strong economic downturn, unemployment climbing, and debt in default, the financial institutions have been tightening their belts. And more and more, we are hearing the term credit crunch. But what does that mean exactly, and how does it affect us? Here to break it down and help us improve our credit score is certified mortgage planner Monique Runge with Marquis Capital Solutions. Welcome to the show, Monique. You know, you and I are friends, and I have a feeling I'm pronouncing your, your, name, your last name incorrectly. Am I? It's Rungi. There you go, Rungi. Why don't you tell well, me? Well, it depends. If you're in Denmark, it could be wrong. Okay, there you go. I've known her for a while now. She hasn't <laughs> told me. Great, okay. Let's talk about credit scores, Monique, and what is it exactly, and why is it so important to get a good one? Well, credit scores is basically how financial institutions, lending um, departments, base um, their ability to offer you, say, premium pricing, whether you're going to go out and buy a car, whether you're going to get a special interest rate on a credit card, or obviously with mortgage interest rates, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's a fair Isaac scoring model, and the scores basically range anywhere between um, 300 to 850. And in today's market, the ideal score is really going to be somewhere around a 720 or higher. Okay. So, so it's gone up quite a bit. So that's our goal, to keep it up. That high. is your okay. goal in order to be able to be eligible for, you know, a lot of the great zero percent interest financing on autos um, in order to offer the best interest rate for mortgage rates and credit cards as well. So, so it really does play a huge role when it comes to making those big purchases, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay. It's hundreds of dollars difference monthly. Wow. Yes, yes. All right. So we, it, it should be between over 720. Yes. I mean, about, you know, let's say 18 months ago, 620 was kind of, hey, you're yeah, good. Yeah. But because this credit crunch, the banks have really had to raise the bar okay. as a result of, you know, this economic downturn, people losing their jobs, defaulting on a lot of debt, et cetera. So if you have a score below this level of threshold, you're considered a risk, moderate to high, just depending on where you're at. How can we improve our credit score then? Well, there's a lot of ways, but I can kind of give you a few examples. For mm -hmm. example, um, let's say you have a Visa credit card mm -hmm. and it's got a credit limit of 10000 mm -hmm. and you've got maybe a $6,500 balance on it. You want to try and keep your credit balances, if you do have to carry a balance, at no more than 50% of your credit limit. So you mm -hmm. want to pay that down to, say, 5000 Okay. And the next one is if you're married, you can add your spouse to make it a joint account. That's interesting. Correct. Because in many situations, um, couples, for example, one, cup, one spouse has great credit. The other one has marginal credit, maybe just from some, you know, poor choices when they were young in college. I've been there, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. And so most of the credit goes on the husband's name. So what you want to do is create a joint account so it will help boost the scores for the spouse. Keep a minimum of five accounts open and utilize them regularly, you say. Correct. A lot of people think that, well, I've paid off all my debt. I don't have any bills, so I should have excellent yeah. credit. But actually now, they don't have any way to measure your ability to handle your debt responsibly. Uh -huh. So if you only have one or two trade lines, like a credit card and a gas card, that's all there is to report. So the kind of generic rule of thumb is to have somewhere around five trade lines open. Oh, wow. That doesn't mean you have to max them out, yeah. but just show that you can use them and pay them responsibly. Which leads us to the next point, which is pay off the balances monthly to demonstrate that you can use your that you can have credit. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm a big fan of credit cards with mm -hmm. points. Okay, and I I know a lot of people that are. So what we do in our household is we use like a points credit card for like an airline company or oh. a hotel company. Uh -huh to make all of our regular purchases, groceries, gas, dry cleaning, et cetera. And then at the end of the month, we pay it all off. Now, granted, there are going to be some months in some households where cash flow is going to be a little lean, so you can't pay it all off. But just, again, showing you can use that credit card and pay it responsibly. Request that your credit limit be increased to lower your debt ratios. Exactly, exactly. So say you have this $5,000 credit card balance mm -hmm. on a line of credit for only 5000 Well, now you're going to be at 100% capacity, so it's going to pull your scores down. Gotcha. So what you want to do is maybe pick up the phone and call that credit card company or whoever it is you're debt with and see if they can increase your line of credit. So that way it'll improve your credit scores, ah. but you're not necessarily intending to utilize it. Yeah. All right, what are teaser rates? Teaser rates... <laughs> 
<laughs> I saw that and I went, that's yeah. interesting. Teaser rates are most common um, in, say, for example, credit card companies. Okay. So they'll say, you know, for the first six months or 12 months, you'll get zero to three percent, whatever it is. But then whatever balance you have on that credit card, so say you rolled over a balance from a high interest credit card to a new credit card with a teaser rate, and then this teaser rate period expires, now it goes up to the higher interest rate. Mm. So a lot of people do that as they continually will open up new yeah. credit card accounts to take advantage of the teaser rates. But that is hurting your credit because now you've only got a few months of history on that credit card. Oh, okay. So it so shows watch that out you're for those. maxing yourself out by going and getting all this new credit. Exactly. And the, your next uh, tip is here: avoid those late payments. And um, correct. Okay, because collections that can really yeah, put a ding in yeah. your score. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, late payments. You want to always avoid late payment history because okay. that will, you know, if you go 30 days late then it's considered one 30-day late. And that will basically be reported to all three credit reporting bureaus and pull down your credit score. Obviously, you are in the business of helping people right. and helping them improve, improve their credit score. So please give Monique a call. If you have any questions for anything, 433-9447. She knows it all, folks. Uh, Marquee Capital Solutions is where you're at. And uh, also, you can email Monique at Monique at MarqueeCapitalSolutions.com. There yeah. it is right there. Thank you so much for being here, Monique Rungi. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next time I'll get it right, I promise. Stick around, folks. There's more Central Valley today coming up after this.